Hi, it's Steve here from Snap to provide an overview of our new scenario comparison tool. I'm going to be using a few scenarios for John Snapper today. He's 59 and looking to retire at age 65 with a target spending of 54,000 a year. He has a few more years of work and he is continuing to contribute into his RSP and TFSA. Once he retires, He's going to withdraw from his financial assets to see whether he's on track to spend until the age of 100. We can see here that he still has a bit of money left in his base scenario as of that year of the plan. I've also created a few other scenarios for John so that we can see alternative options for his retirement drawdown. And I have a recommended scenario that includes a home downsizing to free up a bit more cash in case he wanted to spend more throughout retirement. I can compare those three scenarios by clicking on the horizontal three white lines, also called the menu selection. I'll click on that and then click on compare scenario. This will bring up all of the client's current scenarios and give me the option to select anywhere from one to five scenarios selected in a single comparison. In this case, I'm going to include all three and then I'm going to click compare selected scenarios. This is a fully customizable table that provides a wide range of metrics to compare across the three scenarios. In the top left corner, you'll see that I have the option to select different scenarios. So if I wanted to add another to the comparison after doing some initial analysis, or if I wanted to remove one, I can click select different scenarios and then uncheck or check any additional scenarios. If I have only two scenarios and I click compare selected scenarios, you'll see that I have a column here to outline the difference between the two scenarios. So it will take the recommended scenario in this case and compare it to the base and show the difference for any of the metrics that are not the same. Going back to select different scenarios, I'm going to include all three and then click compare selected scenarios. You'll also see in the top left that I can toggle between real dollars and nominal dollars. The default is to show nominal dollars, which is the actual future total or figure in that relevant year. And then the real dollars provides a reference value that discounts that relevant value back to the first year of the plan based off of the general inflation rate of the projection. Let's take a look at the, the metrics and the table itself. So on the left, we have the metric title, and we have those categorized into three different sections. There's the primary metric section. This includes things like the goal progress, so how much of the target retirement spending is funded in the current plan. We have the retirement age, projection end age. We continue down and we can see that there's a separate section for the personal estate. So within the personal estate, we can see things like the financial assets, real assets, their tax on the estate, and then the estate after tax, and be able to easily compare that across different scenarios. And then we have the third section, which is corporate estate. Now this might not apply to each of your projections, and so you can remove that either on a one-off basis, or you can save that as your default settings. The way that we can select different metrics to show is we can click on the button at the bottom left here. We can either check and uncheck a specific metric or we can remove all of the relevant metrics under a specific section at once. So if you don't run corporate projections, you can uncheck corporate estate and then click show selected metrics. And now it's only gonna have the primary and personal estate. If I want to apply these changes for all future comparisons that I run, I can click on the arrow button and then click Save Current Metrics for New Clients. And that's going to make sure that when I run projections and, and comparisons in the future, it's going to default to my selected metrics. Showing that once again, I can go back into Select Metrics and maybe I want to remove a few of these to try and condense the overall table and maybe I'll exclude some of the non-relevant sections of the estate in this particular case. So now I'll click show metrics and we'll be able to get closer to having everything on a single screen at once. So that's how you can customize the metrics and save the defaults for future plans. You can also select the time window that you want to be calculating those metrics over. So for instance, sometimes you might want to do analysis specifically up until retirement, for instance 
or you might want to start your analysis once the client has retired. You can change either the from age or the to age in order to customize the period that's being used for these comparisons. The to age is likely to be very commonly used because that's how you're going to be able to uh, calculate different estate years. So for instance, if I save at age 90, you'll see that the personal estate information has changed and now reflects the information as of that 2055 year of the plan. So you can quickly see over time, how does the estate differ between these three projections? Now we can talk about how you can use this tool in your client conversations. So in terms of the scenarios that are included, the first scenario that you created in terms of the historical time period is listed in the leftmost column, then the second scenario that you created, and then any later scenarios that you created are listed from that point on. And you can take a look at differences in key metrics, such as the goal progress. So here we can see that they have more funding available for their retirement spending goal in the recommended scenario than they did in either of the two prior scenarios. And we can get a sense of why that might be. So in this case, they've actually downsized their home. So we can see that in the personal estate, there's less money uh, in the value of the home because they sold some of it, but that freed up cash to be available within their financial assets and available for liquid spending as needed. We can also see that in the recommended scenario, they have a higher estate after tax than in the previous two scenarios. So they have more liquidity and a slightly higher estate after tax. So these are ways that you can compare different scenarios and help your client understand how different decisions will impact their circumstances, whether it's related to the taxes that they pay, the government benefits that they receive, or anything else that you want to include in your metrics. Now this is the first release that we have have scheduled for the scenario comparison, and we do look forward to continuing to enhance the capabilities based off of user feedback. There are a couple of ways that you can share this information with your client outside of SNAP projections. The first option is you can right click anywhere on the modal and then click print, and that's going to allow you to create a PDF version of this information. So I would just say save as PDF, and then save that file in its current table format. The other option is I can select everything in the table, click copy or control C or right click and then click copy, open up Excel or any other spreadsheet and then hit control V or right click and then hit paste. Now that I have the information in a spreadsheet, I can format it. So I might wanna remove the hyperlinks that are included in the headers and then I can select the relevant section, customize the font, the size, and then I can indicate any bolding and then resize the column. So you can either include that within a PDF or an Excel file. These are things that we're looking at adding automatically within the software. We have other examples where you can directly create an Excel file or a PDF from the software but we wanted to get this functionality into your hands as soon as possible so that you can start interacting with it and letting us know what the most valuable next enhancements will be for the scenario comparison tool. Uh, we do look forward to hearing any feedback. You can share that with our support team and you can find our contact information from the help site by clicking on help and then help center in the top right. And you can either give us a call or click contact in order to send us a note about how you're enjoying this, the feature, what you'd like to see added next, and we'll take that into our ongoing development roadmap. We will also have articles available to support you with using this tool, and we'll have an upcoming webinar in order to provide additional tips and tricks and to share the ongoing feedback that we've been receiving from users. Thanks very much for watching, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts.